All right, so welcome back, guys, or welcome to Ship First Time Here. I'm Vision here at Blind Entertainment. Bring you guys and everybody at the time. I'm gonna be giving you guys my review of the season finale of The Walking Dead, episode 16, titled Wrath. Now, if that's something you're interested in, something you want to know my thoughts on, hit the subscribe button down below and hit the bell icon. That way, you don't miss any future videos on The Walking Dead moving forward. Now, let's begin. So, instead of going over each character's storyline, I'm going to do pre-war, the war, and then post-war. So, first we got the pre-war, and I absolutely love what we got there. We got the Sadiq chat. That was okay. I think it was just okay, in my opinion. We didn't really need it. It was just reaffirming what we pretty much already knew. Then you got go outside and them all getting ready. I absolutely loved that. And I loved the line with Jerry and Ezekiel about how you gotta enjoy the morning and take it in because this could be the last day for some of their people. I absolutely loved that. I think that was some of the best lines. It could easily be overlooked or forgotten. And I think that's probably one of the best lines of the entire episode, in my opinion. Then you got them. You got you got the former POWs reading the hurt away. I absolutely love that. And then moving on, I also love how they finally address how the information Gregory brought them could be not a hundred percent true. I absolutely love that. I did not understand why they didn't address it in the previous episode. However, I like how they addressed it in this episode. Perfectly done. And then you got Morgan freaking out again, like with the Sadiq stuff. I think it was a little bit forced and we didn't really need it, but it was okay. I think they could have done something a little bit differently. I understand what they were going for, but again, just felt a little bit forced and unneeded. And then you go over to Negan's side and I love the stuff there with Eugene and Gabriel. I love the chat with with Dwight, that was probably one of the best chats as well, because you got him talking about how Dwight no longer has respect, and in a way, I also kind of see it as not 100% foreshadowing, but kind of, I would say maybe foreshadowing probably, Negan's demise at the end, where he also loses the respect of his people. I think that was also brilliantly handled done, and I also love how you got him sending off his people to the trap, and then him having Gabriel coming with him for the confession. The confession, I think, was brilliantly handled as well. Another great scene. And I think the ride there was also handled well. And I like how you have him telling Gabriel his entire plan instead of having it being like exposition scene. I think that was handled very well done as too. And then you got... Then you got Rick and the scouting group killing his men as he set them up. And again, I don't like ghost scenes, so the Jared stuff didn't really enjoy. It was okay, but it was alright. It didn't really need to be there. And then you got the whole Jesus stuff. I'm going to touch on that in a minute. Because I really felt like the Jesus stuff is it felt forced as well. Because I think it would have been handled a little bit better if we had gotten a lot more scenes with Jesus and Morgan in the earlier in, earlier in the season. However, the two of them having this chat now... It just came out of nowhere, in my opinion. It felt like they needed something, and they said, Oh, we got Jesus here who doesn't want to kill anybody. We could have him have this conversation with Morgan. And I feel like if they'd done that earlier in the seasons, a couple episodes back, and built it up to this point, it would have come off better. But again, it was just all right. And then you have them getting ready. I love the 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 kind of nods to the whispers with the giant herd and the po and the little spikes there. I totally love those little nods to them. I do not think it's anywhere anyway connected to the whispers, but I do like I think it's kind of like foreshadowing, a little bit nodding to the coming story. I do like that. I love all the setup pretty much. I think other than some of the forced Morgan stuff and the Sadiq chat I think the opening and setting up to the coming war was handled perfectly to the T. And I f think it was probably one of the best opening sequences to the war in the entire All Out War storyline. Then we move on to the battle. And I like how we start off with Negan on the megaphone and him informing Rick of everything. Because I really like that. It just echoes back to what he told Daryl back in Season 7 about how he's everywhere. And I just love how they had them all whistling as they brought them into the trap. Just reminiscent of the Season 6 finale. That was so great. I loved how they did that. Then how he brought up Dwight. And I love how he has that same shirt that Daryl had on. Such a great callback to Another great callback there. And I love that. And I love how he mentioned that he found out that he was the mole. Instead of them thinking that Dwight turned on them. I like how they reaffirmed that. And then you have him bring up Eugene and Gabriel. And how he's about to kill Gabriel. I really love that. And then you have him about to kill him. And then he goes... 
Then he tells his men to go get in position and they all line up on the hill. And I love that scene where they're all up on the hill. And I love how they have, they kind of draw it out a few minutes and you have all their faces of Rick, Michonne, Maggie, all of them realizing that they're pretty much about to die. And then at the last minute, all their guns explode. Brilliantly done. Brilliant scene. I love how they did that. It's such a great scene. And then I love how in the chaos and all that you have... You you got Dwight and Gabriel who t- actually like, fight back at Negan and like throw a few punches at him. I really love that. And then he retreats. And then you got Rick taking advantage of the moment and yelling, attack now, and they all charge at them. However, that's where this kind of pretty much goes to hell for me at this point because it was horrible. It was a horrible battle for the end of all war, in my opinion. Because you got Rick and them charging into battle. And then the only actual scenes of fighting we get come from Morgan and Jesus and one scene of Michonne fighting someone and that's it then it just goes to them then it just goes to Tara and the POWs holding off the attack at the hilltop which I don't even understand why they're attacking hilltop were they was that just the plan to kill the rest of people there like how did they know they there'd be people at Hilltop? How could they? Maybe they all left. Like like they did. Like how would they have known that? That just makes no sense. And then you got the, and then you got the Oceanside people showing up, and that was the weakest thing I think I ever saw. Cause like they get no lines. They don't even say anything. Not even Aaron says anything. And they show up, throw the fire bombs, and then we don't see them again for the rest of the episode. Was like was that really worth anything? Like, what was the point of that? Like, they don't do anything. And then when we get back to the fight, you see the rest of the survivors go up and you have that one savior, Laura. She surrenders and the rest of them surrender. It's like, where was the actual battle? We never actually saw any kind of battling or fighting on camera. It was pretty much all done off camera except for a few scenes, which really annoyed me. I wanted to get more battle. I wanted to see more scenes of actual fighting. Like, yes, our survivors had guns, but I feel like the saviors could have done some hand-to-hand combat. That would have been so much better. And then we move on to the Rick and Negan fight. And first question is, why is there a window in the middle of the woods? Like, that makes zero sense. Like, I think, like, did they just put that thing there to so Rick can shoot it out and then he has something to stab Negan with? But why in the world is there a stained glass window in the middle of the battlefield? Like, that makes zero sense. And then you got the, the standoff for them. And it was okay, I think, for what, for what we got. But I think we could have gotten a little bit more. And the whole Negan tearing up when Rick brings up Carl doesn't make any sense. Because like I said, time and time again, Rick was, Negan was going to sh- kill ne- kill Carl in the season 7 finale. So why would he care about Carl now? Doesn't make any sense. And then you got Rick telling him to give him a couple minutes for Carl. And now uh, while that is great, I love that. But it's just, it, like the whole lead up, like the fight between them felt like it was nothing. They like threw like two or three punches. They both ended up on the ground. And then you have Rick show up and try to talk him down and then you got him with a piece of glass and then he stabs him in the neck and that's it and then it's just like that's the end of it yeah, that was the end of all out war that's how you end it and i like how they had this the only thing that i like out of the negan fight is how you got rick looking at his bloody hand and realizing that he's not honoring his son's memory and how he's not doing what carl would have wanted him to live in peace and then he, he had, turns around. And this is another thing I don't understand is all the saviors, all the communities were just standing there watching them fight. Like, why didn't anybody help Rick? Like, they just stood there and watched him? That no, doesn't make any sense. That really annoyed me. And then you have him go up and tell, tell Sadiq to go save Negan. Meanwhile, the amount of blood that was coming out of Negan's neck looked like he was dead pretty much at that point. I don't understand how they pulled that off, but it just makes zero sense in my opinion. I don't understand it. However, I did like the reaction from Maggie. So realistic. Something that real realistically would have happened. And I loved that scene between her crying and telling him how he, they have to kill Negan for Gwen. I really loved that scene. It was probably one of the best scenes in that part in going into the third act of the show. Totally loved it. Perfect perfectly done. And then you got Rick's speech about life and death and the giant herd being a nod to the coming story arc with the whispers. I love that. 
brilliantly done again. So great. I think they just dropped the ball on some fighting. And I really wish they had done something where during the Negan Rick standoff, you saw in the background snippets of the the militia and the saviors doing hand to hand combat. That would have been such brilliantly done. And then at the end of it, you have Rick coming up the hill. He can't shoot off a gun because of the herd, but maybe he stops the battle a different way and then delivers his, his speech. But I think that was brilliantly done. And then at the end, you got them all heading out. The Morgan stuff, uh, I don't like what they did with him here with the Jesus stuff again because it felt like it was forced. I wish they had done it more in the earlier half of the season. I'm going to go more into Morgan in the Fear of the Walking Dead review because it sprinkles into there. But I'm going to go into that more. I just felt like the Morgan stuff was forced. As for the Eugene stuff, I love how they gave him more stuff. He actually killed the savior, brilliantly handled. I love that. And then I love how Rosita punched him in the face afterwards. I feel like the Rosita punching him in the face and Maggie breaking down at the at Negan's living was like the not just their reaction, but I feel like it could have been reminiscent of like how a lot of fans felt about Eugene in the past few seasons and how fans would react to Negan living. I like how they did that. I just really love how they concluded it. The battle itself was weak, but for what we got, it was just okay. And I'm really looking forward to what they do in coming up in Season 9 with the hanging storylines from what they did here. Now we move on to post-war, and I love what they did with Maggie and Savior Dylan. I love what they did there, and I can't wait to see what they do more of him in the future. I think that was brilliantly done, and I don't think he's Comic Dante. I think he's just going to be a top lieutenant for Maggie in the new beginning. And then you got them going over to the sanctuary, Rosita and Tara, and I love how they did that, helping them rebuild. I like that. And then you got the whole Dwight stuff, and now that... That is 50-50 for me because I like what they did there. However, Daryl telling him never to come back ma- makes it going to be hard to bring Dwight back in a new beginning. And I'm curious to see how to handle that and what they do in that storyline to bring him back. And then you got Maggie meeting with Jesus and Daryl saying how they're going to show Rick and Michonne what they did was wrong. And I'm very interested to see what they do there because I don't think there's going to be like a civil war or them fighting each other. And I don't think Jesus is involved. I think he's just hearing Maggie out and going to be like the voice of reason and try to stop her. But I'm very interested to see what they do there. I'll probably do a whole separate video on that. Then you got Morgan going to Jadis. And I love that. And you learn her real name's Anne. So I'm very interested to see what they do with her in the future. And I'm going to go more into Morgan and fear. Then you got Rick's speech to Negan. And I love that. I love how they give that information to us there and just tell tell him how he's going to be exam- an example for the people moving forward to building a new world. I love that. And then at the end, you got Gabriel's being able to see. I love that. Reaffirming his faith. That was a brilliant way to end the season. And then, of course, last I want to talk about the whole him going on a walk with young Carl. I love that. Brilliantly handled. And just a really great book end to the whole season even though the battle was weak, I think what they did and how they executed it was pretty good and decent end to Season 8 and all that war. So yeah, guys, that's my review of The Walking Dead Season 8, Episode 16, Wrath. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and share. And don't forget to subscribe down below and hit the bell icon that way you don't miss any future videos on The Walking Dead moving forward. This has been Vision here with Blind Entertainment, and I will see you next time.